we want at the same time the goodness of this world we want the goodness of the hereafter one might say well that's always correct but you know life is such that we become oblivious of our connection with Allah while we're connecting ourselves to the globe and to the comfort and materialism of this world I need a little bit of comfort I do but not compromising my relationship with Allah I need to earn but I need to fulfill my salah I need to go out to work but I need to make sure that I'm dressed well and by the way when we speak about dressing well it's not just directed to females as some of the men think it's directed to the males as well and I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about the trends of today wow some of them are okay but some of them subhanallah they leave you showing your designer label on your underwear Allahu Akbar may Allah protect us so we need to direct it to the males as well some so tight that even the sisters won't fit into that Allahu Akbar may Allah grant us ease I'm just trying to balance it to say my beloved brothers who are here when we talk about dress don't just say yeah, tell them yeah, tell them you're the guys who stare by the way may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us but to be more serious it's actually addressed to all of us myself included I also need to be careful how I dress how I carry myself when we say dress in Islam it doesn't just mean what you're putting on but it includes what, how you carry yourself when we talk of hijab hijab is not just the type of clothing you have externally but it's a condition that you carry yourself upon it is a way of life as well it's part and parcel of your identity and that would include the men as well as the women this is why when Allah speaks about lowering of the gaze he says tell the believing males to lower their gazes and protect their chastity or protect their private parts he starts off by speaking to the males the males and the women come only thereafter there must be a reason well the reason is at times the men need it more than anyone else but we all need it let's be fair we all need it may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good misconception in Islam in the minds of non-muslim is that why does Islam subjugate the woman by keeping her behind the wheel why does Islam subjugate the woman by keeping her in hijab before I discuss the reason of hijab let us analyze what was the status of the women in the past civilizations when we read the history of babylonian civilization it says that women were ill-treated and if a man committed murder his wife was put to death this was the law if you read the history of the greek civilization known as a very great civilization at that time they believed in an imaginary woman by the name of Pandora who was the cause of all the evil in the society in that great Greek civilization women were used for sex and pleasure prostitution was common when you read the history of Roman civilization even in Roman civilization the women were looked down upon nudity and prostitution was common when we read the history of Egyptian civilization the woman was considered as an evil and she was called as an instrument of the devil when we read the history of Arab civilization before Quran was revealed the Arabs very often they buried the female alive after she was born Alhamdulillah Summa Alhamdulillah after the revelation of the Quran this evil practice has stopped but yet it persists in other parts of the world Islam Alhamdulillah uplifted the woman Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was the major benefactor in giving the rights to the woman and after Islam has given rights to the woman it has even shown us a way how that woman should maintain a status hijab has been prescribed to the woman so that she maintains the status and doesn't go back to the old days 
Normally, people talk about hijab for the women, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the glorious Quran first speaks about the hijab for the man and then speaks about the hijab for the woman. Quran says in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 30, say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. Whenever a man looks at a woman, if any brazen thought, any unashamed thought comes, he should lower his gaze. This is what the Quran says. Once there was a Muslim man who was staring at a girl for a long time. I told him, brother, what are you doing? This is haram in Islam. He told me, a beloved prophet said, the first glance is forgiven, the second is prohibited. I have not completed half my glance. <laughs> what did the prophet mean when he said, the first glance is forgiven, second is prohibited? What the prophet meant was, that if you unintentionally look at a woman, don't look at her again, that does not mean you can look at a woman for 10 minutes without blinking and saying, I have not completed my glance. The next verse of Surah Nur, chapter 24, verse number 31, speaks about the hijab for the woman. That whenever a woman looks at a man, and if any brazen thought comes, she should lower her gaze. There are basically six criteria for hijab given in the glorious Quran and Hadith regarding the clothing of hijab. The first is the extent. As far as for the man is concerned, the extent is from the navel to the knee. For the woman, the complete body should be covered. The only parts that can be seen are the face and the hands up to the wrist. The remaining five criteria for the man and the woman are the same. The second is the clothes they wear, they should be loose. It should not be tight fitting so that it reveals the figure. The third, it should not be transparent or translucent so that a person can see through it. Fourth, it should not be so glamorous so that it attracts the opposite sex. Fifth, it should not resemble that of the opposite sex. And sixth, it should not resemble that of the unbeliever. These are basically the six criteria for hijab regarding clothing. But this does not constitute the complete hijab. The complete hijab besides the hijab of the clothing also includes the behavior, the conduct, the attitude, as well as the intention of the person. Besides the hijab of the clothing, there's hijab of the eyes, hijab of the heart, hijab of the mind, hijab of the thought. It even includes way a person talks, the way a person walks, the way a person behaves. This is the complete hijab. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ahzab, chapter number 33, verse number 59, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the believing women that when they go abroad, they should put on the cloak. They should put on the jilbab so that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. Quran says hijab has been prescribed for the women so that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. I'd like to ask you a question. Let's suppose two twin sisters who are very beautiful, who are equally beautiful, if they are walking down the streets of Dubai, walking down along the Cornish, and if one twin sister, she's wearing the Islamic hijab, the complete body covered, except the face and the hands up to the wrist, and the other twin sister, she's wearing the Western clothes, the mini skirts or shorts. And if both of them are walking down the streets in Dubai, along the Cornish, and if on the side there is a ruffian who's waiting for a catch, who's waiting to tease a girl, I'm asking the question, which girl will it tease? Will it tease the girl wearing the Islamic hijab or will it tease the girl wearing the Western clothes, the mini skirts or short? Which girl will it tease? Which girl? But natural, the girl wearing the Western clothes, the mini skirts or short. If you're inviting, then you'll receive. The Quran rightly says that hijab has been prescribed to prevent the woman from being molested. And after this, if anyone rapes any woman, the Islamic Sharia says death penalty. Many non-Muslims say death penalty. In this age of 21st century, Islam is a barbaric religion. It's a ruthless law. But when I ask this question, and I've asked this question to thousands of non-Muslims, that suppose, God forbid, someone rapes your mother, or someone rapes your sister, 
and if you are made the judge and the rapist is brought in front of you what punishment will you give him believe me all of them said hundred percent we will put him to death some went to the extreme of saying we will torture him to death so someone rapes your mother your wife your sister you want to put him to death someone rapes somebody else's mother somebody else's sister you say death penalty barbaric law why these double standards why we love our daughters we love our mothers we love our wives if the hijab subjugates the woman and protects her we love this subjugation we love this subjugation and we love this protection if this is your freedom in the name of women liberalization selling your body selling yourself we are very happy with our religion islam has prescribed women hijab to protect her and to uplift her and we see today the same thing is happening in the western world same thing what happened in greek civilization roman civilization women in the name of liberalization art culture modeling fashion tv all this you see what are they doing going back to the old age what do you think of hijabis who wear tights number one if a sister so this is for the people that that pound on women constantly and consistently don't allow sisters to progress. Instead, they do exactly the opposite of what the Prophet ﷺ said. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تعين الشيطان عليه. Don't support a person's shaitan against them. If a person is wearing hijab that is not complete, that does not mean that you can say that they are not wearing hijab. That means they're wearing hijab, but there is a flaw in their hijab. You cannot say that it's as if you're not wearing hijab. You know, you are not muhajjaba. Okay, that's not appropriate to attack people to that extent, to beat them down. On the other hand, there is a hijab from the from, we, we know what the bounds of hijab are. We know what the Prophet ﷺ has legislated as hijab. We're not talking about a difference of opinion of covering the face or covering the hands or covering the feet here. What we know is that it represents modesty. It represents modesty. So it should be loose clothing that does not show the, the figure of the body. At the same time, it should not draw more attraction. Some hijabs, some hijabs actually are a tease. They're more of a tease than they are a covering. Don't do something that would contradict the purpose of the hijab. So wear hijab to fulfill its purpose, inshallah. And at the same time, progress. It's not always all in, all out. It's not always all in, all out. You know, sometimes I'll see a sister who will wear, you know, short shorts, you know, or, or a skirt. And she's saying, one day I want to be a hijabi. It's like, aspire by getting closer, inshallah ta'ala. Start wearing long skirts, start wearing baggy pants, loose pants, start wearing long sleeve and things of that sort. But certainly, so the extremities that we have here, and I apologize, Sheikh, I'm taking way too much time. The extremities that we have here is we have one group of people that's acting as if the hijab does not exist. Then you have another group of people that's judgmental against non-hijabis. And there is, there, those are extremities. It's in the middle there. Yes, Allah will look at our insides, but these are manifestations of what is on the inside. These are mandatory actions, okay? So we have to try to act according to the command of Allah, but we've all got our own issues. Let's try to help our sisters, encourage them. One of the greatest things my mother-in-law, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her, what she used to do, they used to actually have parties for every sister that, that started to wear hijab to encourage them. It's not a bid'ah, it's okay. No one is saying that it's the sunnah to throw a big party. And, no, but just encourage, encourage each other. Ta'awanu ala al-birri wa taqwa. Help each other in, in obedience and consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't beat each other down and make them feel like garbage. Help each other to get there. But don't blur the standard at the same time.